Today we are uh, in a serious break. Uh, we are taking a pause or we just concluded our series. Um, want more last week and uh, before we dive into an exciting series next week, it's going to be about uh, the image of God in us. It's entitled Imago Dei and we're going to be talking about what God's, uh, what God's word says about um, us as human beings, our gender and our, uh, uh, our identity will be um, discussed there in the next uh, three weeks and so please do bring your friends. And we do hope to see you. I hope that you would be equipped next week as we start that series on Imago Dei. Uh, since this is a series break, I've been asking the Lord what to share with you. And one thing that the Lord has impressed on me, and as I was praying for all of you and praying for your prayer concerns and praying for our church, is the word growth. God, I believe, wants us all to grow. God, I believe, wants to grow your families, wants to grow your finances, yes, uh, grow us as individuals, but I believe even spiritually, God wants us to grow. I remember my daughter had this experiment a few weeks ago, and she had this um, two sets of mango seeds um, in a uh, plastic, plastic, uh, plastic container. And what she did is, one, uh, plastic container has a uh, mango, mango seeds on a wet paper towel, and then she enclosed it in a Ziploc bag, and then the other one, mango seeds on a dry paper towel, also enclosed in a paper, uh, also enclosed in a Ziploc bag. And then she would, she was supposed to observe what will happen the day after, and then the next days after that. And so she was supposed to observe it. I can still remember the, uh, what happened the day after the experiment. The first day, nothing happened. But when she woke up the next morning, something happened to the mango seed that was placed on the plastic bag with a wet paper towel. It started to break, the shell started to break, and it's starting to germinate. And, you know, I can still remember the face of my daughter upon, upon seeing that germination. And she was excited. Wow, you know, it's breaking apart. It's breaking. The shell is breaking. And uh, you see the, uh, the roots starting to come out. The next day, the roots are longer, and there's even a tiny sprout uh, there on the seed. And then the days after that, it's getting longer and longer and longer. And so she was actually kind of concerned with the other one because nothing was happening with the other experiment because there's no water. And so she was concerned that there's no growth. And I'm sure all of us, when we speak about our lives, when we speak about our businesses, when we speak about our families, we would be concerned if there's no growth, right? I mean, do you still remember the days when you were young and uh, you can't wait to grow old or can't, grow to, to, can't wait to grow up? Like you're, you're putting on your, uh, your mom's clothes or your dad's clothes and you're trying to measure if you've been growing each day. And uh, some of us, you know, uh, in our businesses, in our investments, you are always expecting and hoping that your investments would grow because, you know, you, you like growth. We are excited with growth. We love to see things grow. Now, the opposite is also true that when we don't see growth, for example, if you have a baby and the baby is not growing as expected, if the baby is underweight or the, the height is not as, um, you know, uh, compared to the average um, development of kids, you would be concerned as a parent, right? If your business and your stocks are not performing well, you'd be concerned as well. If your um, company is not growing, there's, oh, that also is a point of concern. Now, if we are concerned about the non-growth of those things, I believe we should also be concerned with our growth spiritually. Do we have that sense of urgency as well? Do we have that sense of, uh, you know, uh, there's this desire in us to grow as well as believers? Because God desires for all of us to grow. He wants us to grow in our relationship with Him. He wants us to grow to be more like His Son. He wants us to grow in our character. He wants us to grow in the way we conduct our lives, in the way we talk to our spouse, in the way we talk to our kids. God wants us to grow. I like this quote from Max Lucado, and he said, God loves you just the way you are, but He refuses to leave you that way. God loves us so much that no matter who we were before, God accepted us for who we were. But yet, God loves us so much as well that He does not want us to stay the way 
we are. God wants us to grow. There's this um, story that I read in one of the books that we we're supposed to read for school, and that story is about this race. And the race, you know, there's so many people lined up in that race, dressed, you know, with good clothing, good runner's clothing. They have those nice shoes, and they were all in the, fit, in the starting line. And they all started to position themselves, um, you know, about to run. And then when the judge or the, uh, the umpire, you know, uh, fired the gun, they were all supposed to run. But yet some of them, instead of running, they just stood up and they just huddled together and said, wow, what a privilege. We're part of this race. What a privilege we're wearing these nice shoes. And what a privilege we're wearing these nice clothes. And we are in the pri we're a privilege to be here. And those who were running were looking back and saying, what happened to those guys? And I remember the author of that book said, sadly, that is how Christians also perceive Christianity. That it's just about having a good start, but not proceeding and not running and not finishing the race. See, how many of you know there is more to Christianity than being forgiven of our sins? There is more to Christianity than going to heaven. There is more to Christianity, you know, than attending church. There is more to Christianity than one hour and a half every Sunday, sometimes even shorter. There is more to Christianity than what many Christians are experiencing because God wants all of us to grow. And that is my prayer. For all of us that's my prayer for me that's my prayer for my wife that's my prayer for my kids and that's my prayer for all of us that we would all yes start well but we would all finish strong as well that we would grow in our faith and that we will be strong as Christians now God led me into the scripture in Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to 12 which will be our text for today as to why, what does it look like, how does it look like for us to grow, and how can we grow? Turn your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 all the way to 12. If you could just please um, click for me. In verse 9, it says here, And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to His glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words. Thank you for what you have inspired the Apostle Paul to write to the believers, Lord God, to the Christians at Colossae. And Lord, as we look into these verses, God, I pray that you would help us understand. Lord, thank you that you will open up our minds and open up our hearts to receive, Lord, your truths. And not just to receive it here in our hearts and minds, but also to apply it in our lives. God, thank you for the growth that you desire for us. Thank you, Jesus, that this is possible through your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And so again, this is our text, and this, as, we've, as you've seen, it's a prayer by the Apostle Paul. It's one of those apostolic prayers that theologians have termed, you know, that is there all across the Bible, all across the New Testament. And so this is a prayer that Paul prayed for the believers at Colossae. And so Paul actually heard about the believers. They heard about, he heard that there are Christians in Colossae and that they're very strong in their faith. That there are Christians, that the church, is, uh, the church exists in Colossae, but at the same time, Paul was challenging them. Yes, you have strong faith, you have good faith, but I want you, God wants you to still grow. God does not want you to be satisfied with where you are. God wants you to grow and progress and mature and to experience the fullness of what God has in store for you. In the same manner, I believe God is also saying, don't be satisfied. Yes, it's good to be satisfied and be content with a lot of things, but in our walk with the Lord, don't be satisfied with where you are. 
Keep growing. Can you say to your neighbor, keep growing? Keep growing. Keep, growing. keep maturing. Keep, you know, um, keep being rooted and keep being more intimate with our God. Paul wrote this when he was in prison. And um, he gave instructions, yes, in the latter half of Colossians, but in the first half, um, he gave some, um, you know, theological truths about who Christ is. And so this prayer that we've read actually is like the thesis statement. It's, long, it's one long prayer. In the Greek, if you read it, it's just one long statement. It's kind of like the summary statement of the book of Colossians, of how the truth of Christ should impact our lives and how we can grow in that faith. And so I want to share with you three quick things about this um, prayer that we've read. Number one, let's look at verse 9. It says, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you would be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. What did Paul pray for? And what should we pray for for ourselves today? Number one is that we need to pray that we would grow in our knowledge of God's will. Grow in our understanding of God's will. Grow in our appreciation of God's will. We all know what God's will is, right? It's here. It's in the Bible. If you want to know God's will for humanity, it's here. If you want to be guided to know what God's will is for your life, this is, this is where you'll find it. You'll be guided by the scriptures as you search for it. But I like here the word filled that was used. It says there, for us to be growing in the knowledge of His will, we need to be filled with God's word. When I did a word study of this word filled, um, several pictures were given just to illustrate what it means to be filled. And one of it is something that we all love. You know what that is? Being full with uh, food. How many of you like eating? Okay, not every one of you wants to admit. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. I love to eat. I like to eat. And so um, just recently, we had a fellowship with one of our uh, small group leaders and worship leaders, uh, Rodri Nadajang. They invited us to their home and we were uh, um, going to have a fellowship and we were surprised at the amount of food that they spread before us. It was, as uh, Ajeng said, it was a smorgasbord. Okay? I don't know if we still use that term, no? It's a smorgasbord of food. And so um, they baked chicken and oh, wow, it's so good. I can still, you know, I'm still full from uh, that dinner. But then in the opposite of that is what happens every time I'm busy. Because every time I'm busy, and I don't know if this is true to you, for you as well, every time that you have, like, um, you have to go through different meetings in a day and go through different counselings and you don't have that much time to eat, oftentimes I just run to the cafeteria and grab myself a turon or sometimes boiled eggs or sometimes it's uh, boiled bananas, boiled saba, and that will be my lunch. How many of you know that may be good to you know, propel you for the next meeting, but if I keep doing that for seven days a week, three times a day, for 52 weeks, I'm going to die early. Because it's not healthy to snack on food all the time, especially to run, okay? Somebody said, you know, boiled banana is good, saba is actually good, but Filipinos know how to make things really dangerous. They put oil and they put sugar, and yes, it's more delicious, but it's actually more, it's cardiac delight, okay? If you, keep the, if you keep doing that. And so we love snacks, right? But you know what? God does not want us to snack on His Word. God wants us to be full with His Word. Yes, we're busy. Yes, we're doing a lot of things. And sometimes those one verses and, or oh, one verse, Lord, okay, I'm, go I'm good now. Okay. Yes, that's Okay. But will you also try to dig deeper? Will you also try to carve out more time so that you can have those times wherein the Word of God is satisfying you? Because God wants us to grow deeper in His Word. When you say, be filled, what does it mean? Well, the Scripture gives us an idea what it means to be full of God's Word. It says there, it's about knowledge, it's about understanding, and it's about wisdom. 
knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. In other words, to be full of God's Word, you need to read it, knowledge. And then when you read it, you don't just read it and then just let it aside or lay it aside. You read it, but you also try to understand what it means. What are the principles? What is God saying here? What is the relevance of this psalm to my life? What is the relevance of David's story to my parenting? What is the relevance of Joshua's conquest to my business? What are you saying to me, Lord, today? And then, wisdom. Wisdom is applied knowledge. And so, yes, you read it. Yes, you understand it, but you also apply it. Do this every single day. Do this every single day because that is what it means to be filled. Now, again, I'd like to confess to you, I myself am guilty of snacking on the Word of God. Um, I don't know if you also use those online Bibles or uh, Bible apps. There's one version. It's called the version. And for you to be encouraged to keep reading the Bible, they would have those badges and uh, celebratory. When you open it, there's going to be like a confetti that says, Yay, 50 days of reading the Bible straight. Are you familiar with that? And then 100, 100 days straight, yay, there's 100 days of Bible reading. And I have to confess, sometimes I just want to break my record. <laughs> I just want to keep on opening that app so that I'll get those, yay, 150 days, yay, 200 days, yay, 300 days, yay, 600 days, straight in the Bible. Yes, those are good reminders, but are we experiencing God more than the yay, hey? Are we experiencing going deeper into the Word of God more than those confettis? Because God wants us to be full. God wants us to know Him, to understand Him, and to apply His truths. Not just every Sunday. Not just every Wednesday when you have your victory group. But every single day. Amen? Can you say every day? Every day, God wants us to be filled. See, as a good parent, He does not want, like any good parent, you don't want your children to get malnourished, right? As God, God also is a good parent, and He does not want us to go malnourished with a spiritual food that He desires for every Christian to be full of. So here, grow in the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Be filled with the Word of God. Truth be told, we all are busy, right? We all can get busy. We all have work. When you're, some of us, we're busy with work. Some of us, we're busy with uh, parenting. Some of us are busy at school. Some of us are busy with Facebook. And so all of us can be busy. All of us have a lot of uh, you know, things that we are investing our time with. Do you know what? As busy as we are, we need to invest in the proper things. And one of them is in the Word of God. I remember there's this story about somebody who's been, who's been busy. Uh, are you familiar with Susanna Wesley? No one? Are you familiar with John Wesley? John Wesley is the founder. Char John and Charles Wesley are the founders of the Methodist Church, right? It's powerful Christians, very, you know, fruitful Christians. And um, Susanna Wesley... Uh, was her mother. And Susanna Wesley had 10 children. Can you imagine having 10 kids? Anyone of you here, you have 10 siblings. We have three kids. And some of you have 10, some of you have 11. Actually, they were supposed to have um, 19 kids. But in their time, because of, um, I guess, uh, uh, science, and so nine of their sibling, nine of their kids passed away, either in childbirth or sometimes, you know, even in the pregnancy. And so, but ten made it, and they were alive. And two of them, Charles and John Wesley. Now that we have three kids, and every day I wake up and I go to the room of my my daughters, and I, I remember the day prior, you know, um, we would have it fixed, everything organized. But yet the day, the next day when we wake up and we go to their room, we would see all of this mess. 
Like all of those things, like it's a, there's a storm that came into the room and scattered everything and, you know, we have to fix them again the next day. And so this goes on and on and on and on for days, right? And we know this because we were kids once, right? We know how busy it can get at home. We know how housewives can be very busy in a day. Can you imagine not just taking care of three, but taking care of ten? You know, this woman... Susanna Wesley, uh, in spite of her busyness, still made sure that she would get to connect with God through His Word and even through prayer. In fact, what she did was kind of genius. She placed Bibles all throughout their home, in the kitchen, bedroom, the living room, uh, the terrace, all of those places, you would find Bibles. And what she would do is she instructed her, his, her kids, kids, Every time I cover myself with my apron, because she would have this apron, right? Every time I would cover myself with apron, do not disturb mommy. Because mommy is reading her Bible and praying. And so every day, her kids would find her there either in the couch or standing up with the apron on top of her head, covered with her apron as she's reading the Bible and praying. My prayer is that we would have those apron moments as well. My prayer is that we would have those apron moments, that in spite of our busyness, we would still connect with God. We would still get, get filled with the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that comes from our Lord. Some of you, you need this. You need wisdom in your company. You need wisdom for your position right now. You need wisdom for your work. You need wisdom for school. Guess what? You get it from the Bible. That is why it's important. Let's get those April moments. Amen? Let's have those times of connecting with God. Second prayer that he said, So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Number one, it's growing in our understanding of God's will, or growing in our relationship with God's Word. Number two, it's growing in our walk with God. See, God desires for His words not just to stay here in our minds, but to stay on our feet. In fact, God wants us to walk with Him. And when you do walking, I mean, walking is simple, right? It's left foot forward, right foot forward, left foot forward, right foot forward, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Walking with God is the same. Every single day, knowing His will, understanding His word, and obeying His word. Knowing His will, understanding His will, and obeying His will. Knowing, understanding, obeying. Knowing, understanding, obeying. You see, God desires that the Bible connects not just with us every Sunday. God desires that the Bible connects with us every single day. In fact, in the Bible, it says walking is synonymous to lifestyle. Can you say lifestyle? Lifestyle. God wants to transform our lifestyle as well. In fact, D.L. Moody put it this way. He said, every Bible should be bound in shoe leather. I guess they don't have rubber shoes at that time. If he had been born here in our day and age, maybe he would have said every Bible should be bound in rubber, rubber, uh, uh, in shoe rubber. Because <laughs> usong usong sneakers kaya no? What's his point? His point is this Bible should be applied daily. This Bible should be applied every single day of our lives. We're not supposed to compartmentalize Christianity. Christianity should be present in our homes, in our offices. Christianity should be present in our schools. Christianity should be present as we drive, as we parent, as we talk to people. Christianity is a lifestyle. And so, how do we do that? Again, Scripture says, it's about fully pleasing the Lord. Who do you want to please every day? Why are you doing the things that you do? If you want to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, if you want to see if your lifestyle 
assess your lifestyle. If I do this, will this please God? If I keep on opening this site, will this please the Lord? If I keep saying this, you know, to my wife, will this please the Lord? If I keep doing, having that attitude whenever I drive, whenever those tricycles and motorcycles would pass me and cut me, will this please the Lord? And I'm, I'm rebuking myself here as well. Because to walk in the manner of the Lord, this means to please Him. It's to bear fruit in every good work. Will this bring fruit for God? What kind of fruit will this produce if I do this? It's increasing in the knowledge of God, which means, which means maturity. Will this cause me to be mature? Let me share this with you. One of the um, probably least used and seldom, sometimes even forgotten, spiritual discipline um, that our church fathers have um, taught the Christianity for centuries is the spiritual discipline of examine. Can you say examine? Yes. Examine is E-X-A-M-E-N. And examine means just to reflect. See, one of the disciplines that we can um, apply in our lives is the power of reflection. The power of thinking about what transpired the past day and allowing God to speak to us. Examine, basically, you're asking the Lord two things. Number one, what are things that we can be grateful for in the past day? And number two, what are things that God wants us to change? Let's do that. Reflect. Last, yesterday, 12 noon, where were you? What happened in your life then? Progress, you know, um, three afternoon. What happened? What transpired in your day? Are there things that we can thank God for? Are there things that we can appreciate the Lord? And then are there things also that we need to change? Are there words that we said that we should not have? Are there deeds that we have done that we should say sorry for? Because part of walking in a manner worthy of the Lord is pleasing Him, bearing fruit, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Finally, in verse 11, it says, Being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, for all endurance and patience and joy. God wants us to grow in His will. God wants us to grow in our walk with Him. But God also wants us to grow in our experience of His power every single day. I like that. In another, trans or in other translation, says, God desires that we are full of strength. In the Amplified Version, that we will be invigorated, invigorated and strengthened. That we, may be, that we may be made strong with all strength. I like that. The word strengthening or the word strength and power there actually came from the word dunamis, where we get the word dynamo. And dynamo is a powerful invention. It is able to, trans, uh, uh, to convert, mechan uh, I guess, mechanical energy to electrical but it's also able to make life easier. For example, um, a screwdriver. Have you tried using a screwdriver? How many of you know if you try to uh, screw or to put a screw on a wall and you use a screwdriver, yes, you can do it, but it's hard. Especially if the wood is hard, it's going to be hard, it's tedious, and it's going to take a lot of your strength. But if you have a power tool, if you have a power drill, and you use it, you use the dynamo in the power drill, when you say zzz, it's fast, right? You can make that screw go inside that wood very fast because of the power. You know, every single day we can choose either to live our lives like a screwdriver or a power drill. Can you imagine this? The power of God that performed the miracle of saving you is available every single day. To sustain you every single day God is inviting us to receive his power and I believe some of you need to hear this some of you you need to be invigorated some of you, you need to be strengthened right now some of you you are running this race and you're almost empty but the good news is God wants you to be strong God wants you to be strengthened and God wants you to be refreshed invigorated and again full of strength why 
The reason being is because we cannot walk in a manner worthy of the Lord apart from God's strength. The reason being is we cannot, you know, um, be like Christ apart from His strength. But also, we cannot be strong for endurance and patience if not for the strengthening of God. Let me close with this illustration. Um, see, the Bible says, yes, we're called to be in a race. And if you are a runner, some of you here, you run. Running is tedious. Running is hard. And the Bible did not call Christianity a race like a sprint. Like you're supposed to run for 50, 50 meters or 100 meters. It's more like, as some pastors said, it's more like a marathon. And it's running for 42 kilometers. But personally, I'd like to think that this kind of running that we have as Christians, a good picture for, for me about running this race is running the torch, the Olympic torch, running with the Olympic torch. See, what happens is after or w when it's about to have a new, uh, uh, they're going to open the Olympics, that torch will be, you know, carried by a runner from the point where it originated to the new venue of the Olympics, and it will travel the globe, you know, and hoping that the fire in that torch will still be aflame when it reaches its destination point. Sadly, you know, when you travel with the Olympic torch, there will be times that, you know, it would be snuffed out, like what happened a few years back when this woman was carrying the torch, the Olympic torch was attacked by a certain guy in protest to the venue of that Olympics and tried to get the torch and also snuff the fire of the torch. But the goal is this. The goal is from originating point, origin point, origin point, the goal is that we would be able to carry that torch still, fi still on fire until the day that we meet Jesus face to face and say, Lord, here I am. I still love you. After 50 years of walking with you, I still love you. After 50 years of following you, reading your Bible, doing all the things that you want me to do, I am still here and I love you. God wants us to experience the power to do that. It is impossible to do it on our own, but the good news is His power is available for us to do so. We may have some challenges every now and then that would try to snuff out the fire in your torch. But God's grace is here. So that one day, when we meet Jesus Christ face to face, He can tell you and me, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen? Heavenly Father, we thank You for today. Thank You for Your words. Thank you for this moment right here that we have with you and that you are here speaking, whispering, illuminating, guiding. And so Holy Spirit, I pray, would you please do your work? Would you please speak, illuminate and guide every single one of us here today? You know, I believe God wants us to experience, first and foremost, I believe God wants to strengthen us. Some of us, as the year is ending, we still have a lot of things planned. We still have a lot of things praying, uh, believing God for. And perhaps we need the strength of God today. And the good news is God's strength is available. And so if you are here and you need the strength of God, you need a fresh infilling of God's strength, a fresh power that comes from God, an invigorating force so that you can be um, inspired once again to work, have the patience once again to parent, have the grace again to love others, even those that are in love. If you need that grace, with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, can you please lift up your hand? Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters. God, I thank you 
your grace is something that we can receive. Like a rain that's pouring down right now, Lord, we receive of that strength. Lord, I see through eyes of faith, some of us here, we need that fresh rain of grace and strength from you. Lord, thank you that right now you are washing away frustrations. You're washing away hurts. You're washing away anxieties and worries. You're washing away, Lord, just our fear of what's going to happen next. But instead, Lord, right now, you are exchanging that with strength. You are infusing us with your power, with your rest. And so we receive that once again today, Lord. If you're lifting up your hand, can you just please take a deep breath right now? Just receive it. Yes. Yes. Receive. Receive the strengthening of God right now. Receive the grace of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we all stand up? Father in heaven, we thank you that you desire for us to grow in our understanding, in our appreciation, but also in our application of your word. And so right now I pray, would you please give us all the grace to budget our time wisely, to allot times each day that we can have not a snacking time with your word, but Lord, a good meal with your word. Father, thank you that you will be the one to give creativity to some of some of us. I know we're so busy. The scale, the weight, Lord God, of responsibilities that we're carrying, Lord, God, thank you that there's grace still to connect with you every single day with your word, to grow deeper with you, Lord, with your word, Lord. Thank you that there's grace for that. And we receive this by faith in your mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God.